In July 1588, beacons were lit across England to warn of the arrival of the Spanish Armada. Elizabeth's darkest fears had come true. England was at war, open war at last. It was something that Elizabeth had twisted and turned for 20 years to avoid. Elizabeth hated war because it was so expensive. It was also unbelievably risky. The loss of Calais had destroyed her sister Mary's reputation, and Elizabeth well knew that a similar unforeseen disaster could undo all her own work. Elizabeth loathed war because, as a woman, she couldn't lead her own armies. Instead, she had to give their command to hot-willed men who would disobey her orders and might even turn her own forces against her. The slide into war had begun nearly 20 years before. By the early 1570s, Elizabeth had triumphed over her opponents in England. She had seen off a rebellion and executed the ringleaders, including her own cousin, the Duke of Norfolk. There was a fragile peace in England, but Elizabeth was in constant danger. She had powerful enemies abroad, headed by the Pope, who, like a 16th century Ayatollah, had signed a fatwa on the Protestant English Queen. Whosoever sends her out of the world with the pious intention of doing God service, not only does not sin, but gains merit. Elizabeth had powerful Catholic enemies at home as well. Mary, Queen of Scots, had been Elizabeth's prisoner since her desperate flight from Scotland in 1568. Mary had a strong claim to the English throne through her great-grandfather, Henry VII. On her arrival in England, Mary identified herself passionately with Catholicism. Mary's faith set her on a collision course with Elizabeth, especially as relations between Catholics and Protestants in Europe were about to explode. In Paris, on St. Bartholomew's Day, the 24th of August, 1572, Catholics began a massacre of their Protestant neighbors. Everywhere there were people who fled, and others who ran after them, crying, kill, kill. There was no mercy, either for age or for sex. It was, in very truth, a massacre. The streets were strewn with naked, mutilated corpses. The river was covered with them. Sir Francis Walsingham, Elizabeth's ambassador in Paris, barely escaped with his life. The Queen recalled him to London and gave him a new job, masterminding England's security. Walsingham quickly identified public enemy number one. Nothing is more necessary than that the realm might be delivered of her. If the sore be not solved, I fear we shall have a Bartholomew breakfast. Mary was a figurehead for Catholics everywhere who wanted to depose Elizabeth. And Mary knew that there could be only one way out of her confinement. I will not leave my prison, save as Queen of England. The St. Bartholomew Massacre heightened the fear of a bloody Catholic rising in England. It also plunged France into civil war. Elizabeth had relied on France as a counterbalance to the mighty Spanish Empire, which controlled much of Europe, including the Netherlands, that is, modern-day Holland, Belgium and northeastern France. But although England might fear her Catholic neighbours, she couldn't live without them, because in the Netherlands was England's biggest export market, the booming city of Antwerp. In 1532, the year before Elizabeth's birth, this magnificent new exchange was built. Antwerp was now a combination of the city 
and Wall Street. And the most important commodity traded was English wool. And the English traders held centre stage, doing their deals here in the middle of the trading floor. As usual, money talks. And the volume of the London-Antwerp trade meant that the Netherlands were normally England's chief overseas ally. And the rulers of the Netherlands in the 16th century were the Habsburgs. One of them was Philip of Spain, who had been married to Mary Tudor, Elizabeth's sister. When Mary died, Philip tried to keep hold of England by proposing to Elizabeth. But the new queen refused him. Neither Elizabeth nor her people wanted to be ruled by a foreigner again. The people of the Netherlands didn't much like Spanish rule either, and in 1576 they united behind Prince William of Orange. He was horrified by the brutality of Spanish rule, and he turned to Elizabeth as a fellow Protestant for help. Elizabeth now proved herself to be a queen of deception, instead of intervening directly as her father Henry VIII might have done. Elizabeth preferred to get others to do her dirty work for her. <laughs> 